HD. And now, Chuck Scarborough, Linda Baccaro, Janice Hunt, and Len Berman. This is News Channel 4 at 6. Topple trees, down power lines, destructive winds tear through our area. And new fallout after today's emergency meeting about the discovery of more human remains at the World Trade Center site. Good evening. Wild 50 mile an hour winds cause damage across our area today. The violent wind gusts are causing widespread power problems at this hour. Several lines are down through Staten Island as the stormy weather toppled power poles, leaving a number of people in the area without electricity. In Queens, two people had to be pulled out of their car after it was crushed by a tree knocked over by the strong winds blowing through Ozone Park. They were not hurt. And on Long Island, the tarp covering a water tower in Freeport was blown off the tower by the wind and onto the LIRR tracks, interrupting train service there. Con Ed says New York City has 3,100 customers without power. PSENG is reporting 6,600 outages. JCPNL reports 14,000 customers without power. LIPA, nearly 12,000. And CLMP with 4,000 customers out. And keep in mind that customers could be a single home or an apartment building. Right now, here is John Marshall with the latest on the windy weather. Linda, it was a sharp cold front about five miles wide that moved rapidly through the area at between 40 and 60 miles an hour. You could see it on the next route four. A thin line of thunderstorms over New Jersey passed through the city about 3 o'clock, and the difference in pressure, that's why there was such a windy condition uh, throughout the tri-state area. It was a dramatic difference in pressure, and the atmosphere wants to balance itself out, and it does so by the wind. Right now, the pressure is rising rapidly. Take a look at the wind gusts the last several hours throughout the tri-state area. Mount Pocono uh, in the Pennsylvania area, 61 mile an hour wind gusts, 53 mile an hour wind gusts White Plains, 46 Newburgh, 43 degrees in Central Park with the winds. And right now, wind gust continues at 53 mile an hour at White Plains, 39 in Atlantic City. The winds will continue through the next probably three to five hours and then abate after midnight. And for that reason, a wind advisory has been posted. We'll have your weekend forecast coming up in a few minutes. Linda, back to you. All right, thanks, John. And this afternoon's storm will be felt for the next few hours at the airports. JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark are all experiencing nearly three-hour delays on arrivals. Make sure to call ahead if you're heading out of town. And today's storm has already caused delays on the Long Island Railroad. Minutes ago, service was restored to the West Hempstead branch. It was suspended due to leaning power lines, but some LIRR routes are experiencing 45-minute delays. Mayor Bloomberg called an emergency meeting of his top commissioners today to deal with yesterday's discovery of human remains at Ground Zero. Tim Minton's live at City Hall right now to tell us how that meeting went. Tim? Chuck, the announcement came here late today. They are reopening the recovery operation at the World Trade Center site. The idea today was to get everybody in the same room to determine if there had been oversights in the earlier recovery process and if so, to make sure that they didn't happen again. Summoned by the mayor with just a few hours' notice, the attendance list was a who's who of New York City crisis control. The police commissioner with two top chiefs, fire commissioner, a chief medical examiner almost never seen in public, Battery Park City bosses, the MTA, and Verizon's vice president. It is a mystery. We have to find, we need more information. They all came because a Con Edison cleanup Wednesday in a manhole just yards from where names are read every 9-11 anniversary uncovered human remains. City officials had long since declared the recovery effort over. You know, they did the best they could. And uh, there's, you can't be perfect, unfortunately. The meeting ordered by the mayor began just as uptown relatives of 9-11 victims were offering blunt reaction of their own. That today I am sick, I am disgusted, I'm outraged, but I am not surprised. It can no longer be an accidental discovery that brings in their established protocol. The protocol must be that we actively search for remains and then everything else takes place. I'm very proud of the work that our people did. Earlier today, Fire Commissioner Scopetta looking backward and ahead. We will now, with this new development, apply the same uh, comprehensive approach uh, with multi-agency involvement. Um, and we will make sure that to the extent possible, uh, any remains that are there will be found. But Charles Wolf, whose wife's remains have not yet been recovered, says it's time for outside help. What I think is important right now is we bring in a qualified, independent, 
agency who can look things over and say, hey, did you do this? Did you do this? A sentiment not shared by those who met for almost an hour and a half to talk strategy. What was announced here is that they are going to go back into manholes in the area around Ground Zero, and at the same time, the city's Department of Design and Construction is going to look for other underground areas that may not have previously, that they may not have been aware of, so that they can go into those two to check for remains. Although City Hall says at this point there is no plan to stop or delay the construction of the new buildings that are already underway there. We're live at City Hall. Tim Minton, News Channel 4. Thanks, Tim. And the debate about what to do next at Ground Zero continues this Sunday on News Forum. You can see Gay Pressman's entire interview with Senator Chuck Schumer starting at 6.30 a.m. After three mistrials, the government has decided not to pursue its racketeering case against John Gotti, Jr. Last month, Gotti walked out of a federal court of Manhattan after a jury deadlocked 8-4 to four in favor of convicting him on racketeering charges. Two previous trials also ended with hung juries. Radio talk show host and Guardian Angels founder Curtis Slewa promised to pursue a civil suit against Gotti. Slewa says his near-fatal kidnapping in 1992 was ordered by Gotti. The dirty bomb threat against seven NFL stadiums this Sunday, including Giant Stadium in the Meadowlands, is over. A hoax, according to the FBI and U.S. Attorney in New Jersey. The suspect, a grocery store clerk in Wisconsin. New Jersey reporter Brian Thompson has more. No one ever took the internet threat itself seriously for this weekend's Jets game and six others. But from East Rutherford to Miami, Atlanta, Seattle, Houston, Oakland, and Cleveland, security was tightened. At one point, we were told lawmen seriously considered inspecting every car entering the parking lot here using a Geiger counter type device as they do at the ports to detect any radioactivity from the threatened dirty bombs. Would it have kept fans away? I'd go if I had the ticket, especially on a 50 yard line, one seat up, why not? And this week there will be uh, additional people on site, and additional equipment on site to, to handle anything that we encounter. Extra security will not mean longer lines here. Now that the feds have arrested 20 year old Jake Brom of Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, who allegedly posted his writing some 40 times. And for Mr. Braum, this is the big league. Don't mess with football. And this coming Sunday, the NFL referees won't be the only ones wearing stripes. Clearly, uh, this was a situation where this was a guy who not only uh, posted this, but also uh, took some time to brag about it as well um, to others. Was this threat that could have affected game day tailgaters from across the tri-state area just a cry for attention from a 20-year-old still living with his parents? Well, even if it was, the experiences of 9-11 drew this from the U.S. Attorney. We definitely plead guilty uh, to being aggressive in our protection of the people of New York and New Jersey um, and this region, given our common experience of September 11th. Because the investigation began in New Jersey, because the FBI here has worked closely with the NFL in the past, the U.S. Attorney says Brom will have to face the music in Newark Federal Court. In East Rutherford, Brian Thompson, News Channel 4. It's been 25 years since two officers and a security guard were gunned down in Nyack by self-styled revolutionaries. This afternoon, the community gathered to show that the shocking crime is something they'll never forget. Andrew Sipp is live in Nyack right now with the story for us. Andrew? Chuck, people unfamiliar with this area might just think it's another traffic intersection where 59 hits Mountain View, but people who live around here know different. It is one of the most notorious crime scenes in Rockland County history. At a highway ramp that's been sacred ground in Rockland County for a quarter of a century. Friends and family of three men killed in the notorious Brinks attack and the ambush that followed gathered to remember their loved ones. And 25 years later, 25 years, they still choose to stop and take time out of their day to remember my dad. It was on October 20th, 1981, that a group of radical revolutionaries robbed and killed Brinks Armored Car Guard Peter Page at the Nanuet Mall. Then, a short time later, storming out of a stolen U-Haul, gunmen opened fire on two Nyack policemen, Sergeant Edward O'Grady and Officer Waverly Brown. Investigators soon recovered more than a million dollars, but law enforcement agencies in Rockland County never fully recovered from the shock. And this afternoon's ceremony at the site of the ambush, Mountain View Avenue and Route 59 in Nyack, just off the exit ramp to the New York State Thruway, was especially poignant for family members. Only last month, a sudden twist in the case opened fresh wounds. 
Judith Clark, who sat in the U-Haul passenger seat as a decoy, won the right to a new trial. A judge found that even though Clark insisted on defending herself in court, she had the right to a lawyer anyway. That legal turnabout recalled 2003, when Kathy Boudin, another accomplice, won parole. But today, under threatening skies that gave way to flashes of blue, those gathered focused on the memories, not the criminal case. It's like it happened yesterday. I, uh, you know, I lost two good friends, and I really don't, uh, what should I say, I don't like to uh, speak about it. It's not about me, it's about them. And that modest roadside memorial on the side of the thruway entrance ramp has been restored in the last year in honor of the 25th anniversary. We're live in Nyack tonight, Andrew Siff, News Channel 4. All right, Andrew, thank you. Coming up as we continue, Inside the Minds of the Voters. We have the latest poll numbers in some of the key races now that we're less than a month away from Election Day. And they may be just phone call away. Asa has some advice on how you can save some money on your telephone bill. Next Extra. Hi, I'm Jerry Seinfeld. He's back on Extra. Why Jerry's coming out of TV retirement and taking aim. Then the incredible Judge Bruno unleashed on our set and dirty dancing with our Tanika. Next Extra. Tonight at 7 on NBC4 HD. At your Jeep dealer, it's all about the best in American and German engineering and design. And now, during the 2006 model year-end clearance, get 0% financing for 60 months on the entire 2006 Jeep lineup. Like Grand Cherokee. Or Commander, the most capable seven-passenger 4x4 SUV. Or get zero for 60 on Jeep Wrangler or Liberty. So hurry into your Jeep dealer today. Well-qualified returning Daimler Chrysler lessees get a low-mileage lease on an 06 Grand Cherokee Laredo for $219 a month. Listen carefully to Bob Menendez's top lieutenant pressuring a doctor in a Menendez kickback scheme. <laughs> Kickback schemes, federal criminal probes. That's what you get with Bob Menendez. I'm Tom Kane, Jr., and I approve this message. The Hyundai Tucson comes loaded with standard features, including this one. J.D. Power & Associates rank the Tucson highest in initial quality. You'll also find the government's highest crash safety rating, electronic stability control, plenty of flexible space, and America's best warranty. All for thousands less than Ford Escape. So get a better SUV. Get the fuel-efficient Tucson from Hyundai. Lease a new Hyundai Tucson for just $2.29 a month at your local Hyundai dealer. Health coverage for our children and shielding them from violent video games. Body armor for our soldiers and billions for New York after 9-11. New jobs at our military bases in energy, highway construction, and opening new markets for our farmers. Protecting the deduction of state and local taxes and guarding Social Security. New Yorkers took a chance on Hillary Clinton, and boy, has she come through for us. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I'm delighted to approve this message. The 2007 Chevy Equinox. Safety never looked so stylish, and now it comes with something Ford and Toyota don't. The GM 100,000 mile warranty. Learn more, go to Yahoo and click autos. Qualified lessees can get a low-mileage lease on an 07 Equinox front-wheel drive LS for around $269 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. Visit your local Chevy dealer or ChevyOffers.com. Log on to WNBC.com for your chance to win two tickets to see the musical spectacular Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Then sign up for email news alerts delivered directly to your inbox or cell phone. The all-new WNBC.com. Enter the new world. As the campaigns for statewide office in New York head to the home stretch, we're joined by Lee Miringoff with the latest numbers on the Marist poll. And one of the first questions, will today's lopsided contest become landslide victories on Election Day? Well, Linda, Chuck, the front runners for New York's four statewide races are all Democrats. They have big leads, and right now they're in a position, the Democrats are, to sweep these contests for the first time in modern political history. Checking these numbers, Senator Hillary Clinton leads Republican John Spencer by a whopping 37 percentage points. Elliot Spitzer is trouncing John Faso in the race to become New York's next governor, and controller Alan Hevesy has a very comfortable lead over his Republican challenger. And the race for New York State Attorney General, the attention grabber so far in this campaign, Andrew Cuomo has 56 percent, 
to 36% for former Westchester DA Janine Pirro. Uh, Pirro has weathered the political storm over allegedly considering a wiretap of her husband, but she still trails Cuomo by a very wide margin. Well, this was like a, a total Democratic landslide in New York, but is there any chance, however slim, of some kind of an upset? Well, at, at this point, not really, but as we look at the numbers, you know, Alan Hevesy, the controller, is under investigation for allowing a state employee to be a uh, driver of his wife's car. And in a worst-case scenario, depending on the outcome of that investigation and when that is released, uh, he could run into some trouble down the road. That's the one to be watching. Okay, well, speaking of controversy, let's turn our attention now to the congressional races. Sure. Is there likely to be any fallout locally from the Page scandal in Washington? Yeah, well, Congress has certainly been tarnished by, by all of this uh, and what we've been hearing about. Only 32% of New Yorkers think most members members of Congress deserve re-election. 47% question the honesty and ethics of their own representative, and 74% think Republican congressional leaders have acted unethically. And the clincher in all this, by more than two to one, voters in New York, a Democratic state, tell us they intend to vote for the Democrat candidate for Congress in their district. So that's something to be watching. And what else will be on voters' minds when they take to the polls? Well, a lot of things right now, and you know, certainly the war in Iraq. Uh, war on terrorism, uh, President Bush, whose approval rating is at a rock bottom 26% in New York. Um, important issues, but there are two weeks to go, a lifetime in politics, and you know, the ads are nasty. Expect things to get even nastier between now and then. All right, Lee, thanks a lot. Always pleasure. a pleasure. Up next, Asa has the latest ways to cut your phone costs. And in sports, what the Mets are saying today. Last night's classic game number seven. Met fans distraught after a wild night of twists and turns. We will hear from the players at Shea the day after. Next in sports on News Channel 4 at 6. The history of Heather Mills, according to Heather Mills. Get ready for one of the ugliest divorce battles of the year. Access investigates the ex making huge allegations against Sir Paul. Next, Access Hollywood. Tonight at 7.30 on NBC4 HD. I'm Senator Bob Menendez, and I approve this message. Tom Kane Jr. is running a negative smear campaign. Why? Because he doesn't want you to know he'll be another vote for the Bush agenda. Kane Jr. supports Bush's failed war in Iraq, voted twice to privatize Social Security, six times against stem cell research, and he wants to eliminate taxes on inherited fortunes like his own, but voted against raising the minimum wage. Republican Tom Kane Jr., just another vote for Bush's agenda. I'm Brian Williams. Where others saw limitations, she saw young ballerinas, and by doing so, she's making a difference. Her story on the next NBC Nightly News. At your Chrysler dealer, it's all about the best in American and German engineering and design. And now during the 2006 model year-end clearance, get 0% financing for 60 months on 2006 Chrysler Pacifica or Town & Country, the highest ranked van in initial quality according to J.D. Power & Associates. Or check out the best bonus cash ever on Chrysler 300C. So hurry into your Chrysler dealer today. Well-qualified returning Daimler Chrysler lessees get a low-mileage lease on an 06 300 Touring for $3.59 a month. Bob Menendez believes sometimes you just have to break the law. Is that why he brought a convicted cocaine trafficker with him to the Senate for his swearing in? Or why he used his office to do favors for imprisoned mobsters? Or why he wants to give your Social Security money to illegal aliens? Or why he's under federal criminal investigation? Well, Menendez believes sometimes you just have to break the law. New Jersey deserves better. I'm Tom Kane, Jr., and I approve this message. Of course, we didn't know any better. We didn't have electricity. Kerosene lamps. We had coal. In the old Victrola. Rotary dial. And the carbon paper. Didn't... Slide rule. Definitely things have changed. Well, I don't have to tell you, the changes in telephone technology in recent years have been staggering. And Consumer Reports says so are the bills we're paying. Asa Aarons is here now with the story. And, you know, phones serve so many purposes. Uh, we use them as computers, as cameras, as music players, and, oh, yeah, there's that talking thing. All the more reason to make sure you get your money's worth. Talk is cheap once you know how to buy it. 
We love keeping connected on cell phones and home phones, but who likes getting the monthly bill? My phone bills for my home is ridiculous. If I don't follow the program the right way, it can double my bill. Consumer Reports' Greg Doherty says it pays to review your total communication costs at least once a year to see where you can save. One option, consider making a change in service. You may just want to use your cell phone for everything and give up your landline. But check that emergency operators in your area have enhanced technology called E911. It can pinpoint your cell phone's location in an emergency. While most cities have E911, many rural areas do not. Another money-saving option? Do what Missy Azrak and almost 10 million other people have done. Switch to Internet phoning or VOIP. You can get unlimited long distance and local calling for much less. Honestly, I would say that our bills were probably cut in half. Phone cards are another way to save. You do have to punch in a long string of numbers, but with a good card, you can pay as little as three and a half cents a minute. And even if you want to stick to your current phone service, it's a good idea to check the going rates and websites do make that easier. Phone companies are introducing new rate plans all the time, but they don't always advertise the cheapest ones. So it makes sense to call periodically or uh, go online and see what they're currently offering. Consumer Report says while it takes some work to talk for less, your efforts can really pay off. And there's another way to significantly cut phone costs, particularly if you make a lot of long-distance calls from home. Ask your phone company about a local long-distance bundle. You get unlimited service, and the long-distance savings can mean getting local service absolutely free. So do check with them on that one. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Len's here now with the aftermath of the Mets loss, but they had a great season. Yes, they did. That. Fans being fans, though, some are second-guessing what happened last night. Why Aaron Heilman in the ninth inning instead of Billy Wagner, for example. But the truth is, it wasn't managing or pitching. It was their lack of hitting that did them in. This should have been the momentum changer. The spectacular catch by Andy Chavez to Rob Scott Rowland of a two-run homer in the sixth. And he turned it into a double play, for goodness sakes. But the Mets got no hits between the first and the ninth. So when Yadier Molina hit a two-run shot off Heilman, the Mets were cooked. But... Now, without a final chance, bases loaded for Carlos Beltran against Adam Wainwright. He said he couldn't pull the trigger. An apt quote, since their offense at the most important times fired blanks. That's why the Cards, not the Mets, are heading to the World Series. You had a great opportunity at the end. Did you, did you revel at that opportunity? Well, you know, I, I feel bad personally because I didn't come through. But like I say, you know, uh, I leave everything I have out there today, you know, and we all did. We had that confidence going. We just had that, that eerie feeling that we were going to make one of those dramatic wins like we've been doing all year, uh, but just wasn't in the cards for us. And, um, you know, like I said, I think it's a, a great learning experience, especially for the young guys in here that, you know, we've been in this position before because, you know, we're planning on knocking on this door again next year and uh, for years to come. Well, you can't fault Willie Randolph for the moves he made. I agree that Heilman looked good going into the ninth, and he had to save Billy Wagner. I like the fact that Randolph didn't use injuries or anything else as excuses or alibis in his post-game comments. A gloomy morning at Shea, both the weather and, of course, the mood of the fans. As for the players? You kind of try to put it behind you and go on with your life. It's, it's tough, you know. We, uh, it just happened last night. I guess the feeling's the same as it was last night leaving, so um, it'll take a little while to get over it, but uh, I'll get over it. You get a taste, and, and that's all you want to do is uh, get back to the postseason every year after that. Well, you wonder if Floyd will be back with the Mets. The cards eked it out on the strength of their pitching to add insult to injury. For Mets fans, they celebrated last night at Shea. And now they are going back to the World Series for the second trip in three seasons. Here we are. We're going to have another chance, and uh, I just want to get one win, hopefully. <laughs> Right, Albert, I can't see them beating the Tigers. Game one tomorrow night, the pitching matchup. A couple of rookies, Justin Verlander for Detroit, Anthony Reyes for St. Louis. After a long layoff, the Tigers working out today, and here's their manager, Jim Leland. We deserve to be here. We're here, and uh, I think we've proved that just as the Cardinals have. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of our ball clubs. Whoever plays best is going to win. It's that simple. All right, Tigers in five. 
Finally, if the Mets had won, this would have nearly been Mookie-esque in Mets history. Instead, it goes down as just one of the greatest catches in postseason history. Perez deals. Fastball hit in the air to left field. That's deep. Back goes Chavez. Back near the wall. Leaping and he made the catch. He took a home run away from Roland. Trying to get back to first Edmonds. He's doubled off. And the inning is over. Andy Chavez saved the day. The play of the year. The play maybe of the franchise history for Andy Chavez. Only 120 days until pitchers and catchers. <laughs> when you watch that in slow motion, you realize that ball almost came out of the right. glove. It was just and he then had to control it coming down, or mm -hmm. he would have dropped. Oh, it, yeah, it was amazing. I, amazing. I, I heard it on the radio actually, as it was, and I just I wanted to see it visually. It's incredible, more incredible, yeah. just yeah. seeing it. Wow. So coming up, uh, beautiful day, beautiful view from the top of the rock. Now here at Rockefeller Center, John's uh, weekend forecast. This might be a hint. This week on Real Talk, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman portray rival magicians in The Prestige. And France's most infamous queen gets a makeover in Marie Antoinette. And we'll try to uncover Hollywood's next action hero. This week on Real Talk, Saturday morning at 10. The war in Iraq. Three years, $300 billion, over 2,700 American lives lost. And there's no end in sight. Even today, Tom Kane Jr. says that if he had been in Congress, he would have supported going to war in Iraq. Kane Jr. sided with George Bush. Don't we need a senator who will side with New Jersey? Tom Kane Jr. Wrong on Bush, wrong on Iraq, wrong for New Jersey. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Mike Up wants you to watch the big game in style. Sunday nights, log on to WNBC.com. Then watch Mike Up for the PC Richard & Son play of the day. It's your chance to win a gift card and a 61-inch DLP TV. Details at WNBC.com. Tonight, on an all-new Law & Order. A popular TV show that catches criminals in the act. It's sick stuff. Now, one of the accused has been murdered. The guy's a scumbag pedophile. And there's no shortage of suspects. Men who do that to children don't deserve to breathe. He's a monster! Just when you think it's over, remember, it's Law & Order. It's creative, I'll give you that. All-new Law & Order, tonight, 10, 9 central, on NBC. The 2007 Chevy Equinox. Safety never looked so stylish. And now it comes with something Ford and Toyota don't. The GM 100,000 mile warranty. Learn more. Go to Yahoo and click autos. Qualified lessees can get a low mileage lease on an 07 Equinox front wheel drive LS for around $269 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. Visit your local Chevy dealer or ChevyOffers.com. Listen carefully to Bob Menendez's top lieutenant pressuring a doctor in a Menendez kickback scheme. And the only reason I stuck my nose into this room is because Menendez asked me, you know, to, to do it, you know, to do it. There's got to be a condition to it. Condition to it. It would make sense for you because it gives you protection. Protection. Because Menendez asked me to do it. Kickback schemes, federal criminal probes. That's what you get with Bob Menendez. I'm Tom Kane Jr., and I approve this message. Closed captioning provided by Toyota, a smart way to keep moving forward. It's time for the weather. John Marshall's here, and I did like the look of things in our live shot that we have from the top of the rock. There, Isn't it great? Yeah. We got that camera up yeah. there. Oh, it gives us beautiful shots and rapidly changing weather conditions the last three or four hours. We were dealing about 3 o'clock with a strong cold front that gusts through here with winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour, and there you go, a pretty shot right there. Some fair weather clouds, but it's still breezy out there. The lights start to twinkle on over New York City. Outside right now, the current reading of the park down to 52 degrees. It's going to be a cold night, and the wind is busy. Out of the west, 17, gust to 35 miles an hour. The humidity, 58 percent, and the barometer continues to rise. All good weather indicators, drier and cooler air is working through the region. High today, 66, four hours ago. Since then, the mercury, our current reading of 52, is the low, and just 45 hundredths of an inch of rainfall at Central Park. Wind gusts this hour, they're beginning to diminish, and that's the good news. The wind advisory continues through about midnight throughout the tri-state area. 37 mile an hour wind gust at New York City, 33 Belmar, 39 Bridgeport, 35 in Newburgh. Again, saturated soil, 
It doesn't take much for weak trees to come down, so be careful out there in the next couple of hours. North and west of New York City, the cold air is a coming. 48 degrees in Sussex, Newburgh, 52 degrees in New York City. Colder still north and west of New York City. It's in the 30s and snowing in Watertown, New York. 40 in Ithaca, 58 degrees in Washington, and the front is just on its doorstep at Richmond, Virginia at 68 degrees. Satellite and radar picture, there goes that front from 3 o'clock. It was over New York City. Right now it's over Boston. Baby's chugging. And to the north and west of New York City, again, the snow is beginning to develop. We're not going to see snow, but partly cloudy skies overnight, and the winds will diminish over the next three to five hours. Mostly clear after midnight, 43 in New York City, the mid to upper 30s north and west. There will be a bit of a wind chill out there, a bit of a bite to the air.